Hello, perceptive readers. This is part two of our special reading during this month in Exodus. You will notice from chapter one of Exodus that the people who were placed under a ruthless rule of Egypt had a command even placed upon the midwives to actually kill babies, kill baby boys. Isn't that something? And yet the midwives, they did not obey, you see, the Pharaoh. And it's something to think about there because you realize that as they dealt with the Pharaoh, they certainly had to show the proper dignity and respect, uh, maybe humility, in the way that they answered the Pharaoh. Why? Because you know they wouldn't have been midwives much longer, you see. But they were able to listen to the command of Pharaoh, but did they obey it? No, they didn't. Who did they obey? Where well, they knew what God's law would be on the matter, what God's principal outlook was on the matter. So even though this high official, king of the land, even viewed as a god, told them one command, they listened to the true God and continued to obey his view and command uh, for his people. That gives you something to actually meditate on because you've heard me say many times before that we have humility. That's right. We have that spirit of humility, but it doesn't mean even with the spirit of humility that you agree with everything or that you even obey everything that may be coming from somebody even in a position higher than you, whether it's supervisors, etc. So, you always obey God as ruler rather than man. Let's continue now with Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2, and we will read this whole account about Moses. And then... You know, as always, we have another reading to look forward to, special reading this month in the book of Exodus. But let's read Exodus chapter 2, all right? Now, a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months, but when she could had him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with a tar and pitch, or with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the weeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his son, where his own people were, and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people, looking this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day, he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, Why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? 
Then Moses was afraid and thought, What I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the trolls to water their flock, father's flock. Some shepherds came along and drove them away. But Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. When the girls returned to rule their father, he asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? Raru Ru asked his daughters, Where did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Zipporah gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom, saying, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. I hope you have benefited from this reading of the Holy Scriptures, also known as the Good Book and the Holy Bible, whose author is Jehovah God.